Hello, this is Justin Cates. I'm the Director of Emergency Management for the City of Nashua, New Hampshire, and a board member at the National Alliance for Public Safety, GIS, SNAPSIG Foundation. Uh, and I want to welcome you to our session, on-demand session, on virtualizing emergency operations centers. Uh, with me for this specific vignette is Hal Grieb, uh, who's currently the Emergency Management Director for Jefferson County, Colorado. And he's going to talk to us a little bit about um, a case study from his previous work in uh, Alachua County, Florida, uh, where he was the director of emergency management there and uh, led a really innovative approach to creating a virtual EOC platform using a tool called monday.com. Uh, so thanks a lot for uh, being with us, Hal. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks for inviting me. So um, you were involved in the COVID-19 response uh, and Kind of tell me a little bit about uh, some of the concerns that you had as you were looking to scale up your uh, emergency operations, uh, probably in the March timeframe of, of last year. What were, what were your thoughts in, in thinking about how to activate an emergency operations center in this type of an environment? Sure. So, so to your point, it, it's something, you know, in emergency management being uh, paid to be paranoid, I was actually kind of watching the tail end of January into February what was going on. Uh, in in you know the Chinese province uh, and, and watching that pandemic kind of unfold and and started kind of uh, you know, brainstorming what ifs as, as we all kind of do professionally. So uh, being a newer director at the time in in, in the county, um, I had inherited um, a uh, a web based emergency operations platform, uh, a pretty well known platform uh, that that is used today. Uh, I inherited that and started evaluating its capabilities in a, in a truly virtual environment. And, um, and I started doing that in, like I said, about mid-February. So, uh, so evaluated that platform, realized I, I, didn't, I, I didn't trust its capabilities for what I saw going on in, in the, the, the enhancement and the organizational structure I was putting forward. We were also in the middle of writing a brand new from scratch CEMP. And we were, we were creating a, um, an incident support model, emergency support function hybrid. And some of those concepts, I didn't feel bolted in directly into the software platform I had. And changing the software architecture was going to be too much, too expensive, and too long for the, the timing that I, I kind of saw happen going into late February. So, um, so as I did that, I brought my internal team together and I started um, doing internal drills of process and figuring out what tools I had at our uh, disposal for specific processes. And I found that one of the tools that we had uh, already for project management from, uh, I was uh, organizationally within the fire department in our emergency management office. And a previous, uh, in a previous instance, the county had procured monday.com for the board of commissioners to track tasks from the commission meetings. And that was also given a license to the fire department that I had access to. So I, I started realizing that this tool, monday.com, from a project perspective, project management perspective, really started fitting some of the processes that we were identifying that needed to be done. And so um, uh, literally had a drill, evaluated our capabilities for, for various things, and then mapped, crosswalked those improvement items to specific tools. And for, uh, for notification, of our team. We used our Everbridge platform. There was a specific, very specific use case for that for Everbridge. Then we used a very specific use case for collaborative environments, and that was our team's platform. So we could have a conversation, have informal uh, meetings and, and chats on the back end, and then Zoom for our video capability, and then Monday.com for all the project and process management that, that is incumbent into an EOC. Very good. And um, when when you were looking to activate, uh, was was there a certain decision point that you had to determine whether you were going to be in a uh, physical emergency operations center, or you were going to go completely virtual, or whether you were going to kind of operate in a hybrid environment where some people would be there at the physical EOC and you'd be, you know, working everybody else on the platforms that you had mentioned? Yeah. So I I requested the public health pandemic plan and read through that. And then understood that I needed to, to prepare whatever process 
for the EOC had to be a remote solution, totally remote at, at worst case. So um, again, we kicked it off. Uh, I think I had, I had one meeting with the collective group prior to activation to, to really get an understanding of, of scope of effort, kind of uh, give everybody my strategy and coordination and, then, and also set the expectation that we were gonna do something that hadn't been done before. And, and so please give, give everybody, including my emergency management staff, grace, because not only were we doing a brand new EOC organization, but we were doing a brand new activation in process and tools. So uh, I, I just encourage grace and understanding at all levels. And, uh, and that was the last time we met as a complete EOC group. Wow. Uh, I had a, had a meeting and then we did a, we had, it was a 27 week, basically level one activation at a complete virtual uh, operation. Uh, my staff and I, we, we kind of, uh, maybe we're a little control freaks. We did come in, but I think that was just, you know, there's four of us, five of us, I think. Yeah, five of us. Uh, we would come in again. We didn't have to, but we wanted to to just make sure we could have that that uh, nuanced conversation when needed for for sure. control and coordination. And it was much more manageable too. You know, if you if sure. you only have four people, you can certainly kind of spread them out and not have to con not have to deal with the concerns of you know a full activation where you've got tons and tons of people in and out of the the room at the, at the same time. Correct. So um, so one of the you know the specific reasons that we wanted to talk with you. Um, as part of Inspire was, was really because this was sort of an innovative use case of a tool that's not emergency management specific, it's not designed for emergency managers, um, but you, you really use this monday.com tool um, to, to virtualize your operations. Um, so kind of tell us a little bit about what monday.com is and um, why you looked at this tool as sort of an option in comparison to you know, going and building something yourself. Sure. So it's a loaded question with a lot of, there's a lot of different answers for that and a lot of very specific reasons for that, but hopefully I hit most of them. I think first and foremost, um, being in emergency management for 15 or so years, the one thing I've learned over my time is that when you have a niche product designed with one goal and role in mind, that's the only thing it can do. And that's a very limiting perspective, especially when you get into the scope of a worldwide pandemic. Um, there's, a, there's many reasons for that, right? It's one, it's a specific tool. So it doesn't have maybe the scale or, or effort behind the, the user interface design and backend support. So you know, historically, that, that means you have smaller companies that don't have the backend, even IT support staff to build out a robust solution. So that's one reason. I liked Monday.com. When you look at their customer base, um, it is a project management tool and it's designed to support very many, many big uh, Fortune 500 and smaller companies and their collaborative efforts across the, the world. So I knew that it, it already had the scope and scale to support project management at a worldwide scale for an, an entity. So with me just being a county, I knew that they could support me. So that was one big, one big tool. The other reason is because it was de it's designed for a specific role and function being project management, it's not trying to be all things for everybody. It's not trying to do chat. It's not trying to, to be a word. It's not trying to be uh, any specific one tool. It says, we're good at project management. Let's be the hub and bolt into a bunch of other products. So the, the, the backend architecture being an open API and having some already pre-built Inner, inner, um, interfaces to Microsoft 365, to Zoom, to um, Slack, and some other tools that are out there, again, showed me that, that they had an open mind and, and that's of collaboration coordination. And that's the same, that was the same electronic representation that physically I have to embody as emergency manager. I have to collaborate and connect with a wide variety of disciplines and platforms and people and so I, I need a software that does the exact same thing. Sure. No, and that's um, a very important component of trying to work in this environment is you do have to interface with so many other tools and um, it really doesn't do everything. You have to find ways to connect with those other systems. So that's uh, it's good to understand, you know, why you went down that route. 
Um, you kind of mentioned this a little bit. Uh, you know, one of the other aspects of this session that we're doing is virtualizing emergency planning. And so um, while you're talking about, you know, virtualizing the EOC, it also sounds like you use this tool um, for your sort of day-to-day -day operations within, um, within the, uh, the emergency management department. So um, how, how are you using this tool, uh, you know, as, as a sort of a project management tool for emergency management? Sure. Um, so yeah, that's, that's how I fell into Monday. I was using monday.com again as a project management tool prior to, to, let, to, to flipping it, if you will, into an EOC management tool. So, um, you know, again, that's the true power of monday.com is, is in fact, it is, a, it is a task management and project management uh, goliath. Uh, it, it, it's visualization of data, the ease of it not being, uh, so, so most of the softwares we deal with, say even Excel, when you're trying to do Gantt charts or trying to do pivot tables and, and some of the things that I don't even know what those mean, uh, it takes a, a very advanced skill set of understanding to visualize data. You know, Access tried to do it for a while, but it, it wasn't, it, it was still too cumbersome for, for somebody like myself that's not IT savvy. Um, so what Monday did is it took some of those basic building blocks and concepts and, and through whatever magical IT interface, it's able to take very complex data sets, very long tables, and with a click of a button, flip it into a visual Gantt chart, into Kanban, or into other visual records. They even have llamas for, for tasks. They, they flip task management into dancing llamas, if you, if you so choose, uh, to give some fun thing. And so for us, just as a fun case in point, we already had tasks for llamas, uh, but in, during COVID, because of the, 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 the heaviness of the response that we were doing and the just the long hours we were doing, we flipped all of our resource requests into llamas. And for my staff, we had that running on the front of the EOC at all times just to add some levity to the mm -hmm. weight of all the, the literally hundreds of, of resource requests we were getting. Um, and so all that to answer your question, you know, in emergency management, we're, we're scoped out to a minimum of 12 months. And so to backwards plan, here's the project, here's the uh, sub projects, because it takes many, many blocks to build a, a thing, to use a Lego block analogy, uh, to build one starship, you need all these other blocks to be laid out first. Uh, Monday.com does a really good way to do that visually and connectively for the data uh, to show workflow, to show process management and to show, um, uh, workload by person. So there's a lot of good, I'm very visual. So there's a lot of really great visualizations of that data that are very easy to, to do. And a lot of templates, they have a lot of templates that you could just bring in and they already work with all of the automations and integrations ahead of time. So that's very nice. And that's something that 365, I love 365 again, because all of our Word documents, all of our products are built on the MS platform. Mm -hmm. um, but it can be difficult and cumbersome on the Microsoft side to, to make some of the things work visually uh, that you want. And that's where I, I think that's the power lends itself to monday.com for me. Perfect. And, and just as a teaser for those who are watching this, um, there is another session on project management for emergency management. So make sure you check that out as well, because it'll talk about some of the fundamentals of what Hal is mentioning about Kanban and uh, Gantt charts and all those different things. So uh, definitely I'll have to watch sure. that. Yeah, but definitely <laughs> be sure to watch that. So um, I, I guess, you know, to kind of tell me a little bit about um, what were some of the significant lessons learned from, from rolling out a system like this? Uh, because you know, I, I can think of any time I've ever rolled out some sort of a IT related service um, in our office. Uh, there's always lessons learned from, you know, pushing it out there. Something I wish I would have thought of before I did it or, or you know, after the fact, I say, man, I should have asked for that feature or tested this out before I, I did it. Uh, any big lessons learned from, from rolling out this tool uh, prior to COVID? Uh, yeah, always, always beg for forgiveness ahead of time. <laughs> Again, um, we, we had a well-established previous software that was trained to by most of my EOC team. And I came in and literally said, we're killing the contract and we're going with this Bef just before we activated for a, a real world incident. So, so one of the things that, that 
some of the support things I learned that work really well is every EOC briefing, uh, I make sure IT is involved at the head of time. If you don't have an advocate for IT, EM becomes IT and that's not good HR, right? Mm -hmm. um, EM cannot be IT and, and that is a big deal. And I had a strong, and I can't say this enough, that, that the monday.com success that Alachua County had was because of a very strong and very uh, upfront IT and, and directed staff to support my rollout. And so one of the things he would do is, is, is every one of our briefings, because I, we knew and understood that we were gonna have to do some just-in-time training. So we held just-in-time training. Uh, we, we, we created a tip of the day um, for Monday. Uh, every time we did a, uh, one of our, we, our operational periods were week-long operational periods. Mm -hmm. uh, for a bunch of, we can talk about that at another time. That's a great, that was a great thing too, uh, week-long operational periods at the front end. And so for every operational period briefing, we would do a, a tip or a trick of monday.com to help people understand some of the cool features within that. Great idea. Um, it, it, you know, so, so IT, doing, making sure you're still teaching and training, uh, not being afraid to change the process in the midstream. Uh, there was times, again, and that's why I really love uh, monday.com is it did not take html or or any sort of coding to change something on the fly you could literally right click change and get it done so uh having the the flexibility and the buy-in from the team to make a quick on the fly change and train to it immediately was, was a big huge thing so being establishing that need to be flexible at the front end you know again this is coordination not command at the uc level so so some of those ics strict things you can get away with in an EOC to be to be more flexible and nimble. Um, other things that I learned was licensing was really great with Monday.com. I didn't understand that a, the difference between a full license, a guest license, and a viewer license, but um, there's some power uh, in learning the licensing of that and uh, and the openness of its forms for people that don't need to be in a virtual EOC. Not everybody needs a license to be in your EOC. So, so having a system that's able to flip out some of the features to people that don't need a license, but need you need their input. Uh, that was a big learning curve, again, in, in leveraging the tool to be more successful. Um, there's some disadvantages of that, right? Like then you've got people that are able to input information that may not need to input information. Mm -hmm. So we, we figured out some of those things uh, pretty easily and pretty quickly. The, the um, yeah, that, that was one of our challenges too, was, was around, you know, kind of permissions and credentials, like who, who needed licenses and who didn't, um, especially since we had so many external stakeholders that weren't, you know, they don't have credentials on the city IT system. So it's, it's not like we can easily just say, you know, provide permissions to anybody with this type of an email address. So it, it definitely is one of those things to, to consider, I think, as you roll out a system like this. Yeah, we created a, it wasn't a public page, but it was a publicly accessible page with the links to the EOC. It was the virtual EOC interface, if you will. Mm -hmm. It's like, click here for a resource request and you could submit, any, anybody could submit a resource request. And that was a big thing we learned with COVID because our stakeholder population went from this many to this many yeah. very quickly because of all the long-term healthcare facilities, nursing homes, uh, healthcare professionals that, that don't historically request resources, we had to flip that I idea into a more open uh, space. And then same with information updates and other things like they can fill out a form, but then we still needed that, that data to, to fill into a database that had on the EOC side, the correct authorities and processes within them to vet validate an action. And that's, again, a very powerful part of what, what Monday.com gave us. Yeah, that's good. That's great. Um, so uh, kind of tell me about some of the, the key processes that you were using this tool for, um, you, know, you know, whether it was, sounds like you were using it for resource requests. What, what else were you using um, this, this tool for within the EOC? Sure. So yeah, re resource request was, was first and foremost, that's to me, uh, that's our bread and butter within our emergency operations centers is, is, is filling haves and needs, whether that's for a thing or, or a thought, uh, we need to, to be able to connect haves and needs and gaps with them. Um, so yeah, resource requests, and that's a very, very specific process. And so within that, especially with COVID, 
we had this, we, we had very limited and finite resources, but with, with a very large demand. So to, to physically, we had to collect those into a, a unified staging area, but we also had to make sure that we had the capability to, to note those in a real-time database. And again, so we used it for resource inventory. Um, mm. So it was a really cool, uh, unique tool to, for, for, again, they have these things called mirrored columns where you could mirror the data in one place directly to another place. And if I said it was, if it was, uh, uh, staged or whatever, it would show up in the resource request as it would in the resource inventory immediately. And so there was there was no lag or, or data management need, which was huge to us. So that was a big one. Significant updates and in information. I have, so again, I had to think how to, to create a, a virtual EOC. And so one of the first things that you think about in a virtual EOC is the conversations that you have. That's one of the most important things that you have. Now you can have conversation in teams and I love teams, have that informal conversation, have the chatter, but just like chatter informally in an EOC, where do you document the official chatter, right? Like where, when you go to a breakout room and you have the, the, the dedicated conversation that those thoughts and those actions mean something, well, we move those informal kind of chatter conversations into an old school discussion thread on monday.com to where you can have a, a we call it a topic tracker. You have a topic tracker. So if we have in the chat, like, hey, we're getting a lot of calls about shelter needs, or hey, what about this non-congregate shelter idea? Who knows about that? Oh, we could probably need to coordinate that. Well, let's let's mark this conversation as official topic tracker. And then let's identify the people that need to be in this conversation. And we can track back to that topic. And, and so we did that. And then if a topic becomes a resource request, well, now you submit an official resource request. And you can follow that thought to action all in one one place. So topic tracker. Then again, there's the other idea of, of conversations in an EOC. You have the lull, and then all of a sudden someone says, attention in the EOC, you know, broken arrow, or, or whatever it is. Like so, so how do you create this attention in the EOC without using Everbridge? Because I don't want to abuse my Everbridge system either. So uh, within Monday.com, they have a great app, and that's another big plus. They have a great app, and then the inter integrations of notifications. We created anybody could send a significant update. They could say that it's an emergency, which is fine. Uh, on the back end, once that was submitted from anywhere, uh, on the back end, my emergency management function or my situational awareness function had the ability to vet. They would get notified that someone sent, sent a significant update from their phone or wherever they were at. And they could read it, and then they could do a send to all which a send to all is attention to the EOC. So they could uh, basically say, attention to the EOC virtually. And so, or they could just say, here's, a, here's good information and they, we could track good information. Or like we all learned in uh, COVID, new files, new updates, new SOGs, new best practices were coming out from FEMA and elsewhere. And so we created a file library. And, and again, the search, the way Monday searches is really dynamic. And so it added a lot of capabilities that were outside uh, of traditional uh, mechanisms. Okay. And then, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. So again, and so other things that we had to mirror, uh, when you walk into an EOC, you want to see who's there. We created an active staffing board and, and literally it was a board of like, the status was either like on or out or, at, you know, so we could, you could vir virtually say, okay, here's everybody who's in the EOC right now. And then mm -hmm. you could see their name and number. And what we did for our physical EOC, because we didn't want to give people cell phone numbers out, we, we posted a public EOC phone number roster for our, our physical phones. But then we, we would make sure on this active staffing that they would make sure that their phone was forwarded. So we could give out publicly the EOC Cisco phone, but then forward it to their cell phone. And that was all kind of in task managed and process managed on this active staffing board. And then final, final feature, again, when you walk into an EOC physically, one of the benefits of a physical EOC is seeing all the monitors around you and seeing all the data in a visual instance that, that you can see all the processes. And at monday.com, they have a feature called dashboards. And these dashboards take a lot of data, make it visually appealing, and you can even pull in uh, outside web parts or outside web pages 
you can pull them in and you can interact with them without having to just put a, a list of URLs and then have to go into another tab. So in their app, when you go to the EOC monitoring, all of the visual representation, I could show you on my phone, are all visually there, again, as if you were looking around an EOC. Wow. Now, and just from what you've just said, it sounds like you were able to replicate a, a good portion, if not the majority of your emergency operations center functions. Would you say oh. that, would you say that, um, would any of them, you're able to do it better because of the way that you were able to use the virtual environment? You know, as an example, did it seem like um, resource requests were getting lost less because it was less paperwork or things like that involved? Was, was there anything that was sort of made more efficient or improved uh, because you were working in a virtual environment? Sure. Uh, yes to less paper. I, I hate paper. Um, so it, do I. Yeah. <laughs> loathe it. Loathe it, loathe it. Um, for those reasons you mentioned. The other thing it really did that I wasn't ready for, but I was very appreciative of, is, is everybody, everybody wants to do well. Uh, I, I genuinely feel that. But what it did was it allowed people to own their roles in a way I don't think they ever had before because emergency management was there physically to, to hold the water for some, some positions. And, and because of the virtualness of this, it really meant that the roles uh, with specific responsibilities along inventory, along resource requests, along situational awareness, those defined roles had to be done by those people. And so while there was some pushback, well, I've never done this before. Like, I don't know why you never did because you were supposed to be. Yeah. Um, I think that was because uh, maybe this is just me and in my history of emergency management, we seem to sometimes want to do it all and thereby mm -hmm. enabling bad habits. And yeah. I think this really helped uh, separate uh, the enabling to the empowering. Yep. No, that makes sense. That makes sense. Were there um, any things that, uh, that, you know, you were able to do with this system that you weren't able to do with uh, existing tools that you might use within your EOC. So as an example, it could be if you're using um, email to communicate back and forth with stakeholders or, um, you know, anything with, which is more sort of traditional or um, very commonplace in the EOC. Was this able to sort of enhance that to any sort of an extent that you, 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 would, you wouldn't have expected? Yeah, it's a great question. So, yeah, we've, we've got a lot of different, uh, in an EOC, you, you have a wide demographic of knowledge and capability. And so, again, what, what I, so what I like about Monday.com is there's, there's five, sometimes there's five or, or more different ways to do something. Uh, what I don't like about Monday.com is sometimes there's five or more ways to do something. Mm -hmm. um, so, so process, knowing your process is the most important thing before you use any tool. I will say that all day long. You need to know what your process is to a paper form before you try to leverage a tool. A tool shouldn't be, you should never change a process to a tool. The tool mm -hmm. should change to your process. So I'm a Makes big sense. believer in that. And that's what Monday.com did for me rather than other tools I've used and had available to me. I was, I was beholden to, to, to make my processes meet that tool. Mm -hmm. And that's not what I'm paying you money for. Uh, you, you're supposed to meet my needs. And so that's one thing. The other thing is when I did run into, um, some roadblocks, some, some, some barriers to entry, if you will. Uh, there's a secret tool with monday.com that I learned along the way is that any item could be updated through an, a secret email. Like you didn't want to abuse this feature, but what I loved is for those people who absolutely refused, I was like, fine, uh, just email, like save this secret little email. And every time you do the thing, it will update where it needs to be and you'll be able to see it and then do the process accordingly. And that was an amazing feature. Um, it just really helped, again, reduce the barriers to entry. And, and what I had found is after people were, were comfortable that I could meet them halfway, they started leaning forward with just accepting the new technology and, and, and uh, changing their brainware a little bit more to, to be inclusive of the software. That makes sense. That makes sense. I, I, the, I know exactly what you're talking about with um, you know, some, some folks just um, aren't able to quickly change to a new system, especially in the middle of a crisis. Right. So having that functionality with, you know, like the secret email or 
some way to connect, you know, sort of a, a legacy style system into your current system without too much of a disruption is an important thing to, to, to consider as you roll something like this out. Yeah, every, every resource request had a specific item number and, and you can create that item number has a secret email address. Again, like monday.com doesn't want you to do everything in email and, yeah. and neither should you. But I really appreciate it again, they in their space of effort and understanding with the, the customer base that they've had, they knew that they had to do something on the back end uh, to support those, those the learning curve. And, and I was just exactly. like, man, this is amazing. <laughs> it was just so powerful. No, that makes sense. Um, were there any processes that were sort of unique to COVID that you had to stand up in the middle of the incident? And uh, if so, um, was it easy to kind of pivot pretty quickly to, to pull, to roll them out? Yes. Uh, so the topic tracker was the biggest, the biggest one that we just created on the fly. I remember so many of the phone calls, so many of the, the team's conversations, it was just, uh, it was a, it was like nailing gel to a tree. Like, how do we take a very important thing, these dynamic and free flowing conversations, and how do we add some sort of like next step or project management to it? Uh, that's where we were brainstorming in the office, and finally it was just like, let's go to old school discussion thread type thoughts. You know, like let's we we've got this great chat feature. We can have Zoom conversations all day long, but if we can't track our thoughts, if we can't have an extended conversation. So again, these conversations would sometimes go for weeks yeah. because of the, the ever-changing momentum or, or policy or process. Uh, you know, searching your email could only go so far or, or scrolling down a Teams could only get you so much. So that, that was a big thing is creating a topic tracker on the fly was very powerful. And then again, we didn't know how powerful an open resource request form you know, flipping a 213 resource request type of, of form publicly was such a big deal to us. And then uh, the other, uh, thinking about this out loud, the other thing that we had to do that we didn't realize was, was because of the extending, extending the length of COVID, um, we didn't want to become the de facto do-alls. Mm -hmm. And so what Monday.com allowed us to do is, is, give somebody else a tool to do something dynamically on the same platform as us, but may had a different purpose. Uh, for, for instance, we had a big call center. So we had people uh, self-reporting COVID violations or restaurant information or all these different things. And so uh, while that traditionally like, oh, emergency management, let them handle it. I was able to say, well, hey, IT, can you create for the public information officer a way for those volunteer call takers to just have a form for themselves and track that on a different workspace independent of mine and and but it still could be tied in for certain needs right. i could be tagged like hey this is an emergency management question hey this is a a, a code enforcement question uh again for for separating continuity versus emergency operations very powerful we have to do that on the fly and then uh citizens demanded information they wanted to know what was going on they wanted to have a way to do it and what money.com allowed us to do again online open forms uh, to the public into a, a centralized hub of project management. And then IT was able to flip that information visually on dashboards available to the public, almost on the fly, I mean, not almost, on the fly. They were able to, to put all the, for every, every single phone call we got that was doing report violations, they were able to, to flip it into an iframe viewable uh, web public postable format at an instance. If you go to Alachua County. Uh, dot us right now or google that's where kind of you can see some of the dashboards that are powered by monday um we were able to give hospitals their own board so they could do the self-reporting of their dashboard number so we didn't have to do that that's dashboard. nice and then again flip that number publicly through an iframe interface i think that's what it's called um and it was just really uh, again blew my mind what we were able to do on the backbone of monday wow yeah, yeah. it's i i can't i mean I'm not the smart one. Uh, I, again, I had a very strong IT contact. Uh, he should be speaking because he was the one that would take my ideas and, and really just make them happen literally within seconds so sometimes. Wow. Now, uh, you've, you've talked about kind of all the things that you were able to build with it. You've talked about the things you built during COVID with it. Um, were there any things that 
you wish it had, any functionality that it that it didn't have that you think is an opportunity in the future uh, to kind of integrate or or build that into the into the tool? Yeah, I, I mean this is probably really weedy, and if anyone from Monday.com is, is watching, the tool is powerful. <laughs> Sorry, uh, the, the, I mean it's so so few things. Um, so the biggest thing is like there's this thing called a guest license. Uh, you can actually use if I have a user an enterprise account, I can give as many free guest licenses as I want, unlimited, as long as they have a different email URL than I'm on. Mm -hmm. And uh, very powerful. The, the problem with that is I'm very role focused as an EOC, a good emergency manager is. It's not about the person personality, it's about sure. the process. Yeah. So within a user license, I can assign a team. So if I assigned a uh, um, you know, public works team to something, anyone within that team will see and have access to all of the boards and interfaces within that team. Sure. Catches, a guest or viewer license can't be part of the team. So okay. I would have to then assign a guest license to each individual board, to each individual task. And, and so it, it, that's kind of, uh, kind of cumbersome from a, a process management, but I get it. They're giving me free licenses, uh, unlimited viewers and guests. So if that's my problem to deal with, I accept because the, uh, the inverse of not having unlimited free would have been very limiting, limiting to my job. And, and I'll, I'll take that trade off. Yeah. And, and, and I could say the same thing within our operations. It was the same situation. Most of these tools have some sort of a, like a guest or a viewer license uh, that, that can be used. And I mean, that was sort of the only situation that we could, we could use for those people who are outside of the city, because it would just be impossible for us to fund accounts for, especially with all the different organizations that were involved in this response. It just, it's impossible for us to say, oh yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll give all of you Office 365 accounts and you know, all that stuff. It's just impossible. So no, it makes sense. Um, this one kind of takes it away a little bit from the, the technology and more towards sort of your team, but uh, were, were there any challenges in, in managing uh, your, whether you be your emergency management team or your stakeholders within the county or even those external stakeholders who might have typically been involved in a physical EOC. Um, were there any big things that you had to sort of adapt and overcome in order to, to work in this virtual environment? You know, I, I use the term brainware to, to quote Colin Powell when he, when he took over the State Department. You know, pe people, even if they're the wrong processes and they acknowledge it, they are beholden to those things until sure. the learning curve and, and process can happen for brainware. And, and that was tough. I, I had, um, again, it, I, my, my joke and my staff say this a lot, uh, like one of my favorite sayings, if you could just get in my head, this would be a lot easier um, because it, sometimes it's hard to explain what I see already and then, and then help people get to that point. So, so there's no, at some point, there's no replacement for some sort of personal interaction. And that's where we saw the Zoom or the Teams video conference, because you really do need the nuance of conversation, tone and inflection to come across. And, and that doesn't come across in a, in a complete virtual uh, EOC management tool or, or project management tool, tone and inflection. I mean, the good news, one of the things I, I, we would do uh, like in, in our task management, there's, again, there's llamas, there's memes, there's gifts that you can add, there's emojis and all those things. I think that's a good thing. Thing, especially in a high stress environment of an EOC and that's something Monday.com already had built. So that helped with some of those tone conversations, but it, it was really just, again, letting people, the hardest thing I had was not the tool so much as it was the process and getting people to own and know the complete process. And then the tool just laid it, made it easier. Um, I did do an, after the 27 week activation, um, we did do a survey to the team and I will say that as money.com is not a survey tool. So using it as a survey, like it again, knows its rules. Mm -hmm. um, but we did do a survey of the complete EOC and anyone that actually gave us any input or an email that was associated to money.com. And the biggest thing that, that we received as far as, uh, you know, other than a good job, kudos, which, we, which were definitely appreciated, the resounding theme was the best thing that we did was go to money.com. And that was, again, my assistant director, she had built out the previous system herself in a, in a previous lifetime. She had 
she was beholden to the old technology and, and was very, uh, she had a lot of personal and professional investment in that tool to succeed. And, and she was not happy with that. But then at the end, even she said, I'm so glad we did this. This was the best investment of time and talent that we could have done. And that was only reinforced by all of the other people that I forced on to, to, to embrace this tool. They were all like, we hated it at first. It was hard to learn, uh, but we're glad we did it. <laughs> and right. don't take it away. Because <laughs> now everybody's using it for their own, like their own project management. They, what, one, the one thing that we, that we saw that happened, and, and again, I, I keep close uh, uh, communications with my last, with, with Alachua County, because uh, a lot of good professional friends and, and relationships were built there. And the one thing that, that I love about money.com is because it's not an EM niche product, um, it was able to scale out. Like mm -hmm. it scaled out into many other departments that had never used the tool. I'm like, oh, I can use this for myself day to day. And I think that's the truest power of an emergency management platform is something that, that you can keep going and flip. Um, so, so there's no blip in, in op emergency operations from regular operations. That's a very, I mean, that's, that's been the, uh, the unicorn for so long in our space is something that could be used every day. That's right. No, and we saw the same thing um, with Slack uh, in, in our operation. Uh, you know, that was something that nobody had ever used before. And then certainly afterwards, people were, were starting to consider, okay, how, how do we use this for our normal operations within the city? So yeah, definitely um, similar situation there. Yeah, um, and, and I'll say Monday works with Slack. Again, like they, they're, they're, their philosophy, I guess, you know, whatever, millennial philosophy, whatever it is, but to work with all not only it is such a cool concept for a software it's like even their quote what would be their competitors they're open have integrations with and they want to make sure if that's how your team works well we're going to work with your team with us and that's yeah. again that's the emergency ma management philosophy yeah that's that's a pretty interesting perspective too because it, it really it, we have to be able to do that because we're working with so many different disciplines so many different levels of government and then you know, the people outside of government, I mean, it's just, um, it's, you never know what you're going to come across in your field. So having the ability to connect and adapt to those different systems is important. Um, so kind of stepping away from, uh, from, from this specific case, um, I know, you know, you've got some experience uh, at municipal, private sector, higher education, tribal, counties, you know, it sounds like you've been all over the country as well. So you've been a little bit everywhere. Um, you know, from your perspective and seeing this transition towards virtual, uh, what do you think the virtual, what do you think the virtual EOC of the future looks like? And, um, you know, do you see an opportunity for tools like, in your case, Monday or other tools like Slack or Office 365? What, what do you think role that they play in emergency management in the future? Yeah, all of it. Uh, it all works, right? It, it, it all, if, if we incorporate lessons learned and best practices nationally as they are, um, you, know, uh, you know, put into canon through the National Incident Management System, if you will, uh, those processes are, are, are true. And just to, to have the tools now to support those virtually is, is again, something I've been waiting for a very long time. I've, I've been hopeful for this again since early on in my career. Um, so, so yeah, there's a place for it. And, and, and again, I don't think it's it's one or another. It's what fits your process. And I think to come to this point from going from uh, when you couldn't even share a word document and, and collaborate, you know, like from the old school discussion threads, and and you know, not even be able to. You know, I, I would get called up to the third floor for having a Twitter account for an official emergency management office to now like they're basically like websites. Yeah. It's so cool uh, to have lived in my, my short career through some of these major changes. And I don't think it's going anywhere. Um, you know, full disclosure, even in my new role, Jeffco, you know, at Jeffco, we have Monday.com. And guess what? We just had a snowstorm come through here. And while it's not completely built out to what I want, I had my brand new staff of five months flipmoney.com from our project management over the last week, we, we, we fine tuned some of our processes and we started internally testing using the snowstorm that impacted the Denver metro area to validate and vet our processes for Jefferson County using money.com. And my staff, are, like their light bulbs are going off. Like, oh, this is, this is what you've been railing about for the past five months. Oh, this wow. is great. So, uh, and again, we, 
I didn't have, so, and again, in full, full uh, transparency, at Alachua County, we, Microsoft 365 was a very limited rollout. Only me and my team of five had Microsoft 365. The rest of the county was still on SharePoint 2016. So um, my EOC team here actually has MS365. So now I'm trying to, to learn how to better use MS365 and make sure we incorporate that. Monday just released a Teams integration uh, like a week or two ago. So there's, there's all these cool new ways to do things that I'm really excited about the future because again, I work private sector is one of my things. And, and I think it's, we're finally to a place in government where we can be okay with letting our team work remotely. Mm -hmm. um, that's something that I, I had put in place with my last team. And I said, if I can't give you a raise because of tight and constricted budgets, what I can do is give you flexibility. Uh, I can give you, uh, you wanna go to the beach and work remotely as long, I can see you work remotely. I can see the real time updates. I can, we can both collaborate on a document in real time at the same time, no matter where we are. Um, I think there's a power to that as far as, as work-life balance. And I'm really excited about that finally happening in government. Yeah, well, it's it's been a long time coming, and yeah. hopefully, hopefully, we see um, you know that that transition fully. You know, I think it really should become institutionalized. Everything's sort of been on this sort of temporary. You know, we'll do it while COVID's happening, but I think people start recognizing uh, how you can really work together collaboratively, both within your team, outside of your team. Uh, and all across your, uh, you know, your stakeholders that are involved in the response. So absolutely. Um, so, you know, that kind of closes out uh, my questions. I don't know if there's anything else you, you think would be helpful for, um, for folks who are watching to, to know or, or how they can get in touch with you if they have any questions about, you know, what you're doing or what you're working on. Sure. I, um, you can find me on LinkedIn. That's probably the easiest, best way uh, for any conversations. You can, you can probably see uh, I am passionate about the profession. I'm, you know, we are some of the few that, that get to, to love what we do and do what we love. Uh, the very, very small uh, uh, group of people on this earth that get to have this kind of fun at work. So I love talking about this stuff. So I'll definitely be more than happy to talk about it. But again, um, just learning from others is huge. Uh, you know, going to the Alachua County website and seeing again, it, it was not the house show, it was a team show. Uh, going over there and seeing some of the things that they're still doing today as far as flipping some of the data that, we're, that we get to do. Um, I think the next, the next bastion uh, of uh, effort is gonna be getting our GIS platforms together and doing a, a more common operational picture, having, these understanding of open APIs. And, and that's some of the fun things that we're, we're starting to do here in, in Colorado. I'm really excited about bringing some of these collaborative processes or, or coming into some of these things where they, they talk about unified GIS. They talk about how, how to flip internal coordination into a public communication, I think is the next powerful tool of ours. I think the public is mature enough to understand our data that we've been kind of uh, huddling around. I think we have a, a very mature and advanced community that can handle information in, in ways that we never thought viable before. And I think that's the next step is now that we're finally being able to do this internally, uh, how do we begin to understand and share this information so people can be empowered to make better decisions for themselves in emergencies? Awesome. No, great. Well, thanks a lot, Hal, for talking with us. And for those who are watching, uh, make sure you check out the other vignettes uh, from some of the other jurisdictions and organizations that, are, uh, that have made the shift towards virtual emergency operations as well as virtual planning. And hopefully uh, you learned a little bit uh, today that you can transition into your uh, world. And uh, by the time we have our next pandemic, which hopefully is not uh, anytime soon, you'll be all ready to go. Thanks again, Hal. Thank you again.